In this video, I'm planning on showing you how to use geometric interpretation to derive the normal equation. And the normal equation is the analytic solution to the least squares for optimization problems. And so what I want to do is start with what we're trying to solve. So if we have a re, like a linear regression problem, what we're how we're actually solving it is we're minimizing our error term or our objective function. So our objective function is that s is equal to, and then this is the sum of i to n. n is the number of observations that we have. So we have yi minus yi hat squared, and the yi is our observed value, and yi hat is our predicted value. And then this is going to be equal to y minus x beta squared. So what we're doing is we're minimizing the objective function. So we want to minimize this. And the way that we can do that is if y minus x beta is equal to zero, then that's minimized. So y minus x beta is equal to zero, so then this is y is equal to x beta. But in reality, y can, y, like we're never going to have zero error. So our model is never going to match the data perfectly. Really what we're solving for is y is approximately equal to x beta. All right, so this is our model. What I want to do to use geometric interpretation to solve this is, first of all, I want to consider, so let's consider y. So y is a vector of observations, and I should make that capital. So y, I'm going to say y1 dot 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 to yn. And let's I want to I want to visualize this, so I'm going to consider that we only have three y's. So if we have three y's, three y values or three observations, we can consider this in 3D space. So y, so this would be one, two, and three. And then we have. So then we can draw our vector. So this would be, so y would look something like this. So this is y. One thing I want to point out with this, even though we're looking at this in, with just three values of y, normally y is a much higher dimension. So normally y is higher dimension. And typically it's greater, y is greater than 100. So n is 100 plus. So then what we want to do next is consider our x value. x is equal to this, so we have the ones but for the first column, but then we have x11, x21, x31, xn1, and I'm just going to do three columns, so x12, x22, xn2. So each column of x represents a vector in space. What we can do is we can draw a vector for each one of these columns. So this would be like the first column. And so I'm saying this is the first column, second. Let's actually do three. So x13, x23, xn3. So then this would be the third column. So this is, so this vector here represents this vector of x's, x values. This one represents this vector of x values, and then let's say that 3 is here. So what we can do is we can say that this, that these basically represent a plane in space. So here's our plane. And so we, what we want to do is think of this vector space as a plane that's the column space, 
so tall space of x. So now that we can visualize our x and y variables or vectors, what we I'm going to redraw this so they're kind of combined. So here's our column space x and here's our y vector. So this is y and I'm going to also draw so I'm going to define this as new y and this is equal to x beta. What we want to do, we want to get as close as possible to y, but at the same time we're constrained by the x column space. So this is our column space x and then this is y. And the reason why we want to get as close as possible to y is because that means that our predicted value is close to the actual value, or it's, is close to the observed value, and that means that our model is accurate, and basically that's minimizing the error term. So what we're going to do is search for a vector in the column space that's closest to the vector y. It turns out that the optimal solution, so the error is minimized, when the error vector is perpendicular to the column space. So if we have a vector that's perpendicular to the column space, that's going to look like this. And this is our error vector. So this is y minus nu y. And so then this is equal to y minus x beta. All right, so what we want to do is say, okay, well, the error vector, so this vector, if this is perpendicular to the x column space, then what we can do is take the dot product between those, and when they're perpendicular to each other, then the dot product is zero. So that's this. So x dot y minus x beta. So we're taking the dot product, and if these are perpendicular, then the dot product is equal to zero. So we set that equal to zero. What we want to do is solve this equation for beta, because that's our actual unknown. And so we can do that by x transpose y minus x beta is equal to zero. And then x transpose y minus x transpose x beta is equal to zero. And then x transpose y is equal to x transpose x beta. So I just added this term to the other side. And then all we need to do at this point to solve for beta is take the inverse of x transpose x on both sides. So if we do that, then beta is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y. So this is the normal equation. So then we can use this normal equation to solve our regression problem directly because we know what x is, our feature variables, our independent variable, and we know what y is, that's our observed value or the dependent variable. So I'm planning on showing you how to use Python to solve your regression problem using the normal equation in a future video. If you found this video helpful, please hit like or subscribe, and thanks for watching.